you know, the, I, I suspect the majority of Australians will get vaccinated and there, and there will be a strong um, public view um, that those who choose not to get vaccinated um, uh, need to, um, uh, there needs to be some sort of um, in, incentive stick perhaps um, through the current programs, including no jab, no pay, um, uh, to, to make that happen. So I, th I think that is a, a very reasonable interpretation of what um, the PM had to say today. A again, looking at specific things like not being able to um, go into restaurants, not being able to travel internationally. Because remember, we're not safe until we're all safe. Hey, yours is the two shot. Do we uh, maintain the vaccine mandates we have, which I think are healthcare, at least in healthcare, do we maintain those mandates or not? Look, the, the mandates are a really difficult one, Neil. From, from my perspective, I'll tell you why. We know that these vaccines can cause heart inflammation. Now, um, you know, there are not huge numbers of, of deaths from heart inflammation, but I think we can all agree that heart inflammation is a serious consequence of having a vaccine and is not the same as other vaccines, non-COVID vaccines. So, you know, are we mandating harm? Um, if we are, then that's a problem. And, and that's one first question. And the second question is, what's the public health value of mandates? Should we really, mm. at this point in the pandemic, take someone out of their job with all the consequences to that individual and their families? Uh, for, for a disease that really the World Health Organisation is telling us we need to integrate with all other respiratory viruses? I think the answer is no. Well, let's understand the science, which is if you get a fifth dose, your protection against severe disease is enhanced for around about 8 to 12 weeks, and then it returns to what it was after the fourth dose or the third dose. So it's very transient protection, Carl. It's not increased protection for life. And that's the problem with these boosters. And, of course, eventually... We're going to have to stop with these recommendations for ongoing right. boosters. I'm cognizant of, of also people in my life um, who are over the age of 60, um, who, are, who are still incredibly nervous about and getting That's pregnant. such a problem. That's such a problem, Carl, because they needn't be. If you're a relatively healthy, over 60-year-old, and you're living at home and you're independent, and you've had your doses of vaccine, then the likelihood of you going to hospital with COVID is extraordinarily small. And I don't think we've communicated that well. Mm. And the health department's still going out and saying, Fright. oh, you all need to be worried. Yeah, they're fine. And, and, and they don't need to be worried. My patients don't need to be worried because most of them don't have the severe medical conditions that warrant that.